Thanks for being here, everyone. Welcome to episode 22 of Nobody Asked Us with Des and Kara, <laughs> presented by TCS. Uh, this is a live show here in Chicago. <laughs> Today... <laughs> Did I semi nail that intro? <laughs> you totally crushed that. Did she not crush that? Yeah, yeah. This is how it goes. Every time um, we get on a call, it's like, who wants? To, we have the five minutes of like. No, you go. You go. It's fine. Do you want to do talk it? About? Should, I do, should it? I do it? What should we talk about? Yeah, how should we say it? Should we say Des and Kara? Yeah. <laughs> Just don't forget to say TCS, <laughs> and then we nail it. Yes, exactly. Welcome. This is um, exciting, big weekend, second live show. Uh, love that it's giving back. The ticket sales went back to something near and dear to your heart, yeah, but we're thanks, all learning everybody. about it. Yeah, so that's that's exciting. And um, Chicago Marathon weekend. So I think we start from the top, and uh, we normally just kind of catch up. So how was your trip in? What's... It was very uneventful. That's good. Um, I felt like a princess. I was in first class, <laughs> and I saw Emma Bates and Dom Scott go to the back. Ooh. <laughs> I was like, didn't, hey, didn't offer up the seat. Yeah, I actually felt really bad. I was like, they were like, Karen, I was like, hey. nope, Put your hat down. <laughs> um, so super easy. I got my warmed nuts, and I had a lunch. Yeah. It was great. But you drove here. Wait, where do you fly? What airline are you? What do you mean? Which, what, oh, United. Which United. Oh, okay. Out of Denver. I was like, we're nuts. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know, you're Delta. I, I used am. to be yeah. Delta. Okay. I do love Delta because they always move you up if you yeah. have status. United is not that friendly. But when you're in first class, they bring you warmed nuts. That's, that's a win. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty awesome. <laughs> okay, but it. let's hear about your journey because you brought your newest family member. We did. Yeah. yeah. We drove, we're about five hours, northern Michigan, not northern, not the UP, but the top of the mitten, like here-ish. Um, that's a, that was a really good map. That's a YouTube thing <laughs> where you're going to have to go. I try to do one thing, a show where I do a visual that you have to go to the YouTube channel to see. Did everybody watch the last episode on YouTube by any chance? Did anyone watch it? Her water bottle was this big. <laughs> But wait, it was crazy. I thought actually, it was a camera angle, but it was wild. It's around the corner. I have the water bottle. And also, I just want to point out, <laughs> you thought the, the puppy was big. So maybe That's the water true. bottle is Maybe I have bad eyes because I can't believe how small Rivers is. He's a little guy. Yeah. So it was five hours from the top of the mitten um, across. <laughs> and it was an easy drive. Ryan did it. I fell asleep. Um, I don't... How many of you met Rivers? Raise your hand if you met Rivers. Did he kiss any of your faces? Anybody, anybody get kisses? Okay, bad news for you guys. Um, <laughs> so we got about an hour into the drive. I was like, man, he's being great. And Ryan was being really, you know, doing, doing the drive. And he was like, hey, uh, did somebody get sick? And I'm like, no, I'm fine. And he's like, no, I, I smell something. And I look in the back, we're an hour into the drive. I look in the back and he's standing, he didn't, I didn't even hear him. And he's up there just eating his breakfast that he had oh. up shocked. <laughs> Helped himself, cleaned that up, and then went right back to bed. That was the only time we heard from him on the drive. Who so. wants food to go to waste? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was right. He cleans up after himself the whole thing. He was, he was a good travel Aww. companion. Thus okay, far. so when you're sleeping and you're about to run the Chicago Marathon in a couple of days, will he sleep in the bed with you? Good question. He... Um, he certainly does. We, we had him in the crate for a long time, and then he wakes up around three or four... Not to go to the bathroom, but to whine because he wants to be in the bed. Mm. So it's better to just put him in the bed to begin with. Mm. Um, so we'll see if he behaves here or not. Do you push him on Ryan or do you just let him be on you? He's, he's pretty small. He just sort of like has a space. Just makes a little space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good well, good. I'm glad he's not going to disrupt your pre-race sleep. I feel like there's <laughs> enough people here who are interested in him that I could pawn him off for a day. That's true. I mean, I'd take him. Okay, I see. <laughs> I'd happily take him. I'll start a raffle or something. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a good fundraiser. Yeah. We could <laughs> donate more money. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Okay. So he's here. So That's he's exciting. Here. And mm -hmm. then... That's my family, your mm -hmm. family. I do not family, see in the room. They're not here, but, but they are coming. They're okay. coming tomorrow. There's this thing called school that Colt yeah. has, um, but they're coming in tomorrow night and Colt's running the 5K with me and oh, a friend fun. on Saturday. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Um, I will be totally honest. I'm totally nervous about this, not because I'm worried about like pacing, but I have a hard time running on roads. Okay. And then when there's people around. Yeah. So if you see me and I'm like, don't touch me. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just. <laughs> my space. I just need my space. I brought two fidget spinners. I'll be okay. But anyway, we're going to do that. Which Wait, will be what fun. did you bring? So I. I'm sorry. Yeah. If <laughs> I run on a road, I use a, like a fidget spinner. Oh, it helps okay. like distract yeah. my brain. And 
it just so happens my son had like 300 when that whole mm-hmm. craze went down. We were like ordering him like crazy. And then he got him in like an advent calendar. So anyway, he has like literally like a Tupperware filled with fidget spinners. So I have one for each hand. I'm ready to go. Do you remember Pogs? I'm sorry, what? D- yeah. <laughs> that's maybe that's just Pogs? the fidget spinner of our era. Oh, no. I hear... Well, Tell them, I don't know what that is. Now I need to know. They're like little cardboard caps, and then you like you collected them. Oh, so guys, that sounds super cool. They're, yeah, <laughs> there are all kinds of them, so I can relate to this. Okay, fidget spinners collecting. Yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'm ready to go. Okay. Um, yeah, you couldn't carry pogs; they would not do anything for they you. They would do nothing. Running. I'd probably squish it. <laughs> yeah, probably. All right. All right. So, so they get in. They get in tomorrow night. Colt does get to miss the last hour of school. Okay. Um. But it's design tech, and he's already getting an A, so it's oh, fine. Of um, and then that'll be fun. We're going to run the 5K and then um, have dinner with our friend who I'm running with, but who's also running the marathon. Okay. Um, on, I did refer to her on the last podcast as Carrie, and she's annoyed because everyone calls her CB, but I call her <laughs> Carrie, so it, in case, cause she will listen to this, CB. So then um, Sunday morning, we're really paying attention, honestly, to you and her. I mean, right. we'll cheer everybody on. But our hearts are most invested in you and her. Okay, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure, CB. <laughs> She'll be great. She will be great. And so will you. We'll see. Should we talk a little bit about your race on Sunday? Yeah, I want to talk about, um, and I think this is a perfect segue because I want to talk about goals for the race. Yeah. Um, you want to go first? My, my goal question. is to see you four times. No, no. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> so I did. I wrote, I had a list of questions. Like, what What are your spectating goals? Like, how many places do you think you'll get to? Uh, you answered who you're following. Let's start with that. How many places can you see I mean, on the I course? I will say that my TCS app is going to be loaded because I do want to yeah. see if an uh, American record goes down. I think there's two American records that are going to go down, the women's and the women's masters. So I'm going to be following a lot of people. I re- <laughs> Conditions are going to be good, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, they're going to be great. And I think the talent is there and I'm excited about that. I think it's going to be a big day for American women. So my app will be filled. Um, But last year we were staying at a different hotel and Adam left us because he was (laughs) going to take the train and do all this stuff and see her a million times. And Colt and I saw her four times. But I'm just finding out as I'm talking to people that our hotel's in a better place this year. So I think we might be able to catch you more than that. But really four times I feel like is a solid effort. And will you be on foot or are you getting some like a line bike? Is there a line bike here, city bike? Uh, okay. They're okay. different everywhere. And then, <laughs> um, or is there a scooter option? Is there, what's the same? Okay. So Colt really is excited about this scooter option. Okay. Um, I kind of hate those scooters. I always kind of tend to fall off of them and feel like I'm going to, but I don't know. They're in play, play potentially. Or, okay. Like, I think last year we saw like three points where we were running across blocks and then we did have to get in a vehicle to get to the last place we were. Um, but I don't, you know me, I don't really plan this stuff. I am terrible with a map. I'm terrible with directions. I'm terrible with anything te- technological. So like basically on Saturday night, Adam will sit down and tell us where we're going. I didn't know you were bad with directions. This is another thing that we have in common. Okay, so I got lost in the police were called on a run from the Nike campus where I lived for almost <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, so, no. I mean... I'm an out and back. Uh, I'm like... No, no, no it was I an out this. and back. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to go into a grocery store, and I was like, um, where am I? And they were like, you're in Aloha or something. And I was like, how close is that to the Nike campus? And she's like, it's like five miles. And I was like, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and then I got back to the Nike campus, and there was police there, and they were looking for me. And The missing persons yeah. had been filed. <laughs> uh-huh. So like directions normally. and I, you know. Okay. All right, I get so, lost really, really easily. So, so you have a map, you'll have Adam. Yeah, and um, smarter than me, so we'll you have, be fine. Is, what watch do you have? Are you going to be able to drop a point on there and be like, this is home base? Let's just I'll have my follow phone. the beep. Okay. So worst case, we'll you know, get an Uber or something. Okay. I'm, I love that you're concerned. I'll f- no, I, I'm 45. I, I, I can figure it out. Spectating goals. This is part of it. So <laughs> don't get lost. <laughs> See some other race. Okay, I have a question. All right, fire away. Because Colt, okay, first of all, Colt has a... Instagram account for okay. his bearded dragon <laughs> and Des will sometimes comment on it. Yeah. So Colt thinks you guys are like tight. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I hope she looks over when I'm cheering for her. <laughs> oh, okay. Which is a lot of pressure because last year 
only at the end did we see people once they were spread out. So are you a person who hears people or not really? You're focused. Um, probably the first three quarters. I think if I'm doing what I hope to be doing and really like digging deep late, I, I'm a person who might grunt. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. you're trying to do something historical and um, I already told him like, I mean, I didn't look at you when I was running and I'm your mom. So no hard feelings there. But I, I, um, I can't wait to meet Colt. I remember I him when like, he was a pod. I know. And so, I think we would be friends. Like, I want to ask him about the outfits for the Bearded Dragon because I have a lot of questions <laughs> about that. And then he's into fishing. Like, we, I, yes, we could talk about fishing fish. for a while. I, I just, know. I think he you might replace you on the pod. I have to say that Des became endeared to my family when at the Boston Marathon, it must have been in 2013, you were injured, I think. And you were, but you were in like the friends and family space. And I wasn't there because I was running, but apparently you like talked to him. Do you remember we're that? Probably playing. And like then my Lego family's like, Desmond is the best. We love her. If you're not going to win, we want her to win. She is go. so great. She was nice to Colt. I was like, okay, cool. I like her too. <laughs> so anyway, Worked out. she's a family yeah. favorite because of that 10 years ago. But can you tell us a little, uh, uh, that's great. Can you tell us a little about the outfits that Colt got for this oh, bearded yeah. dragon? Because I there was an Instagram post. These are the things we catch up on. Yes. And I just need to, the hat. Yes. So and then there's, there's like more a outfits coming up. apparently because my niece has knitted the dragon. Are they homemade? Outfits. Well, the ones wow. that came were not homemade. Okay. So she got a little cowboy hat with a little handkerchief and she got some um, bat wings nice. and then she got like a little snuggie. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about this, by the way. Um, but yeah, he was super excited. So she has multiple outfits now. That's awesome. Yeah. We It reminded me of an experience. We put our... Um, dog miles we got them halloween outfits so we got him uh it was a cowboy hat and then like a thing that kind of like strapped on a like a vest but then the cowboy it was like a saddle and then the cowboy sat in the back so we put that on him he looked adorable it was like he's gonna get <laughs> he's gonna go trick-or-treating and get some dog bones whatever and then our other dog um he was younger and just he was kind of mean. He was a little nasty. Not Rivers at all. Rivers is his sweetheart. Um, but he thought the cowboy on the back was like a toy oh. and that Miles was keeping the toy away from him. And so Miles was like trying to get away from him. The cowboy's going <laughs> this way. The other dog's like, I want that cowboy. It, we don't do costumes for costumes our dogs. Costumes are anymore. banned in the Linden household <laughs> yeah, now. No more. no more animal costumes. Yeah, I think Rivers would be okay, but we don't even mess around. It seems no. like dangerous territory. Not so, worth it, yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can just Photoshop so a So careful hat on. with Margot in the outfit. Okay. Might a dog think she's a toy? Yeah, that would be horrible. <laughs> so just we'll say. keep her up when yeah. she's in costume. Yeah. <laughs> As you should. She should be displayed. <laughs> on the arm. On a, on a pillow. You can all look at her on the Instagram, which I don't control. I only allow, he logs in on my phone. And so I don't, you know, there's some spelling errors at times That's and I just okay. have to let it go. Um, okay, we've well, lost this, our way a little bit. Really, we really <laughs> steered off here. Okay, back to the marathon. Who's racing on Sunday? All right. All right. Okay. So you are how, also. How many first timers? Oh. Any first timers? Okay. Ooh, all right. So I've never run this marathon. Okay. I said on the podcast last week that I'd never been to Chicago, but I forgot. I got an email from someone that reminded me that I did run a half marathon here oh, once. Nice. Okay. I think you said that. I'm pretty sure you okay. said that. But um, I don't know the course. So what are like what are the things that when you're thinking about Sunday, where are the parts of the course that you're excited about? What are the parts that are tough? Yeah. Uh, so it's been 13 years. Someone pointed out the other day since I've last run this race, which is, I know. I know. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so some of this is not very fresh. None of it's very fresh in my mind. Um, but I, I definitely remember certain parts of it. Um, I think it's a course that you can really break up into segments and like, you know, there's out and then back and then out and then back. And particularly with knowing wind direction and how you're going to gauge that and use it to your advantage and then stay patient and tuck in. Um, that'll be super important. Uh, but I don't, I, I don't really remember, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong or prepare me for something else. I don't remember a lot of challenges on the course. I remember obviously the last hill before the finish line. And my coach was like, well, what, you know, what do you need to be prepared for? Where are the challenges on the course? I'm like, the last hill before the finish line. So am I wildly off or pretty close to, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good news. Are there like dead spots where there aren't a lot of crowds? 
I feel like we kind of found one last year, Colt and I. It's been filled. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Breaking news. Nice. Oh, yeah. Okay, is so that where the, be, um, the board is going to be? Do we talk about the TCS? Oh, no. Let's talk about that. That is where it's going to be. Yeah. So that's already filling a gap. I love this. So we already talked about it, but has anyone had their friends and family do a cheer thing for them on the TCS board? Love it. You did? I did a couple of years. Was it, okay, was it for you or did you do it for someone else? My family did it for me and I didn't go. And I, ran, I was running, running, and I was like, oh, it's me. <laughs> did you That's cry? So cool. Okay, so <laughs> this is amazing because I saw it for the first time this summer and people were like breaking down. I, I love this idea so much, except for that I wouldn't want to see my family when I'm racing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's so cool that that happened for you. So there's going to be this awesome cheer board and then people like have family members cheering them on. I really want to do it for you, but I'm, I'm afraid right, that it yeah. will <laughs> You could just put some Margo photos up. <laughs> then I could get a little chuckle. <laughs> Should do that. Okay. That'd be great. Um, yeah, so, and there's there's that here. And then I know, like, I, I'm going to make a really big pivot because we said we were going to talk about this and then we kind of yes. started straying. Yeah. Um, everyone's excited about Chicago, but it's fall marathon season. There's mm-hmm. races every weekend. And um, we would be make a mistake if we didn't mention the TCS Toronto Marathon waterfront coming up. And oh, that's look at this. October 15th. So very similar. Um, you guys can get the feel for the app here, the, the cheer board here. Um, but that race has incredible fields as well. And I think what I think my game plan was that we do a recap show. Yeah. So let's tease it here. You guys should download the app when it's available. Um, check out some of the runners that are going for uh, Canadian national mm-hmm. championship. Um, people are still trying to get Olympic qualifying times, like the elite side of it's really cool. And then if you have friends and family, obviously you can throw as many people as you want to on that tracker. So do that as well. And then you'll be prepared for the next episode where we recap what happened um, in that race. Cause it looks like it's going to be a good one. And it always is. There's yeah. always like amazing results from there. And I hear really good things about the course and it's supposed to be really, really beautiful. Yeah. You would know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Love it. Okay. So that was the pivot to the Toronto. So I'm looking okay. too far ahead. We can come back to Chicago. Let's come back to Chicago. Okay. Tell us what is Des Linden's 48 hours out from a marathon life like? Yeah. Um, I'm actually really excited because I love doing stuff like this. Um, this is great. And it's far enough out that I can, this is a pretty light lift for me to come and hang and chat um, with you guys. But normally if it's a Boston especially in the New York uh, quite often, it's really packed with like media things and um, I don't know, sponsor obligations and just a lot of stuff. And so this race for me is a really light lift this year. We're 48 hours out. Uh, I don't think I have anything on my plate except for like a light run. Um, I'll be dialing in nutrition, making sure that's like on top of instead of normally nutrition a couple days out, I'm like, just get me something. Cause I've been out doing stuff all day. I just need anything. Um, so I'll be able to, to focus in on that. Um, and then we'll all have my feet kicked up and I'll be hanging with rivers watching Netflix. Um, but yeah, 48 hours out, let's see the two days before I'll do an eight mile run. And then the day before I'll do a six mile run. So those will be the kind of taper runs. Um, and then that's about it. I mean, I guess nutrition wise beyond the meals, sipping on hydration, uh, we don't have to super load up on that or worry about that because it's not going to be hot. So it's just uh, carrying the bottle around. I, I use a power bar electrolyte mix and just sip on it. Um, I'll use that big 40 ounce mofo. <laughs> Like <laughs> some last minute weightlifting so huge. Um, and, and I'll be drinking from that. <laughs> what are you a person who switches their diet the week of to a little bit more carb heavy? Or are you just a, uh, no, give me food. I'm always pretty carb heavy to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm a little less fiber yeah. at all. <laughs> like easy bland know, food. Yeah, yes. yes. Totally. Um, so my, I mean, I think if there's anything in my there's a few things in my, my routine that I could tweak to squeeze some time, I'm sure, but nutrition would probably be um, 
something I could focus on a lot. I have a question for you. Go for it. That's what we're here for. (laughs) Did you lift weights leading into this marathon? Okay. (laughs) This woman. 40 ounce curls. Has made two (laughs) Olympic teams, barely missed a third Olympic team, won the Boston Marathon, and has never gone to the gym. (laughs) I can't believe this. I can't believe it. I'm like, you're, you're like, there might be some time on the table. I'm like, uh, yeah, go lift some weights. There's a lot of time on the table. So I did some push. No, I did some push ups. I do some bird dogs. Um, I jump rope. I do some jump rope. So those are, body those weight are solid stuff. choices. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, my, I'm going to use the hand excuse. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's pretty so, pathetic, yeah. but okay. Um, <laughs> Next time. I think we need to do a live podcast where I take you through a workout in the gym. But we should totally do it. My okay. coach would be like, please <laughs> do it. He actually was at my workout the other day and he was in the car with Ryan. He's like, if I, if I was still her college coach and I could yell at her, I'd be like, you, like, I would yell at her and be like, get your ass in the gym. <laughs> I'm like, you could still do it. I mean, I would. And I'll just tell you no. Maybe, maybe not. (laughs) All right. Well, new idea. We're going to do that. And it's going to be so fun. I love the gym. What was your taper routine like? Did you taper your gym work? Yes. Which I actually hated. I didn't (laughs) mind cutting back the mileage, but I hated not going to the gym. I remember talking to you years ago. Maybe we were doing a half marathon and you were like going out to do a 10 mile run a couple days before. Does that sound right? Yeah, for sure. I was like, what? Like, that's what we're doing on Sunday. I I definitely tapered, like taper, tapered. Like I didn't love it. Like it was kind of like a three week thing. And by the last week I was, you know, I was super antsy. I would break my, my day into two, two mile runs just so I could be busy. Um, But yeah, I remember that blew my mind. I remember telling my coach, she went and ran 10 miles. Yeah. Our coaches were wild. <laughs> they were, it was like a source of pride, particularly if you were getting ready for a marathon and you were doing like an indicator half. Yeah. I, I remember doing the New York half a number of times and having to run 16 three days out and like everyone else is in the hotel, like just yes. hanging out. And I'm like, 16 miles. I'm the only one out running the stupid Central Park. I know. Yes. Yeah. Stuff. That's crazy. Yeah. But that, I would never run that half well. It would be like right. get really tired and then see how you're just training you through can, it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no. I'd be like, Such give me life. three days easy. I flew all the way here. I want to run well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. So forty eight hours out for you. What were you doing training wise? What were you doing? I mean, I guess advice for like expo experiences. I, we've had we've had to go to expos to do events, but like if you were. I would try Just to avoid it, honestly. What if you had to pick up, pick up your bib at the okay. expo? Like advice to, you know, folks who've got to go through there. Just, you have to, right? There's going to be time on your feet. So go and do it. Have fun. Stop at the things you want to stop at. But don't, don't make it like a whole day thing. Remember, you've trained super hard to be here right now. So if you can get, go to the expo, have fun, take your pictures, get your bib, pick up the free snacks that you want. And then, and, but remember like you trained really hard to run this marathon. So don't leave it out at the expo. Um, especially not the day before I'm like, I'm a big, like do what you need to do to feel sane, go out and run, go to lunch, whatever. But then, you know, crappy movies are actually awesome. Just put your legs up and watch a bunch of crappy movies. Like that's what I would do. Best, um, pre-race movie that you were like, this is going to suck, but this was the best experience ever. I don't even know why this is popping in my head. (laughs) I'm already embarrassed. When I was in college, it seemed like every time before a big race, a series about Ted Bundy would be on. (laughs) And so like, when I think of Ted Bundy, I think of like really good collegiate racing, which is horrible because they have nothing in common. But anyway, just something mindless and maybe not as heavy as Ted Bundy. (laughs) That's really funny. It reminds me of a story about right before an Olympic trials, we were watching, uh, I don't even, it was like a lifetime thing or something. Oh yeah. Lifetime. Is yeah. So great. And yeah. we had just purchased a home. So we were super excited and we we're just like hanging out at the hotel. We're like, well, jacked on have, like having signed papers and we were watching this documentary and it was the Valentine's day murders. <laughs> and so we're watching it and we're like, that looks like the street. I remember this was in Michigan and the lady who found the evidence that solved the murder 
uh, lived in our house. We bought the house from her. So oh she brought gosh. like she brought like body pieces like and bloody bags back to the house and called the cops. And was like, oh, like I found this across the street from our house. There's these trails. And I was like, we just bought that house. <laughs> it's crazy. That's crazy. It was wild. That is Very totally, random. totally crazy. And Fun I would be like, <laughs> yeah, that's weird. It was really <laughs> random. I was like, I wonder if they held that dock until the home sold. Probably. Maybe. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow. Okay. What about nerves? Yeah, I think that they're good. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that if you've invested and you care and you're interested in how you do and you have the fitness and you're, you know, you want to show it off, that's a good thing. You should be a little bit nervous. Ew. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that's part of it, but they can't be overwhelming. They can't um, be, you know, making you lose too much sleep. You're going to lose some sleep over it. Um, that's just normal. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think recognize that they're helpful, but don't let them overwhelm you. Use your training log, like look back at that and, Mm -hmm. and just know that you're prepared. If you're nervous because you forgot to train different, different situation. I can't help you. (laughs) It's probably fair. You're, you're kind of screwed. Um, I also would get nervous. And again, I thought of it as something good because it means I care and it means all the miles that I put in to be here were worth it. But also I would remind myself, I'm just trying to do something I proved to myself I could do in training, right? Like if I had trained to run 230, I'm not asking myself to go run 220. And I would just remind myself, like I've done the work for what I'm ready to do. And there's always going to be another marathon if I want to try to improve that. So just remember, like you've done the work. That's why you get to be here. Are you a race plan person? Like, did you have a plan or was it like, just go race how I know how to race? Um, plan was always really loose. It was, I think we've talked about this before. It was mostly like, just go with the leaders and stay and then try to kick them. And like, that never happened. (laughs) Um, but I think the second coach I had in my professional career and the third, it was a little bit more deliberate. Like these are the numbers you want to see. If you see this, you're a little too hot. If you see this, you're slacking. I mean, just having some context. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, I, I don't know. I still don't know if I would race with a watch, but I didn't race with a watch for most of my career. That's wild. Yeah. Good for you. I think that's <laughs> well, awesome. maybe I could have been better. Who knows? But Tough yeah. to say. Just trying to get in like, I, in, in with myself, you know, like yeah. how does this feel right now? I do think sometimes, and I think that was too extreme. I think there should have been a watch to like have parameters, but I do think sometimes we become so reliant on this that we forget to think about this. Mm-hmm. Like this is one source of information, but this is a whole nother one, right? Yeah. And I want to be able to feel it. I want to be able to know if I'm over the edge, I, I know, should know what that feels like. And if I'm running too easy, I also sh- should know what that feels like. So I think sometimes we get too caught up on our watches. But I that's my that. little soapbox yeah. for you tonight. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I am and I have been a planner where I write it down um, on paper. And it's like, I, I agree in that you don't want to have numbers totally dictate the thing, but also like things that you've worked on in practice. And, um, like I'll get a pen paper and write it out, like get out quick, settle into your race position and race pace, um, focus on your breathing pattern, things that you can control. And then things that I want to focus on for when it's going to get hard, because that's the guarantee. Like we know when we sign up for these things at some point out there, it's going to get difficult. That's what we've trained for. That's the moment we've trained for and how do we respond? So I'll put notes down for, you know, how to manage that. What decisions do I want to make? What things do I want to be doing? Where do I want my mind to be centered when things get tough um because i find that in those moments what we start to do is bargain like well i can slow down a little bit for a mile or a half mile or if you know i'll I'll just pick it up the next mile or i'm already ahead of pace so this is fine too we just make little bargains with ourselves, and for me having that plan i just go back to like okay there's not there's no bargaining because the next thing i'm supposed to do is this and then the next thing is this and so it takes that conversation off the table because I have a checklist that's just like going into the grocery store. Like, no, we shouldn't get the candy today because it's not on the list. Even though I never listened to that. That's really smart. I wish I I would have done that. (laughs) That's really, really smart because you're thinking about the different scenarios. I basically was just like, here we go, ladies. (laughs) Gun goes off and I'm in it. Until I'm not. (laughs) I like it. You know, whatever. 
Um, all right. So I think the fun stuff is after the race, to mm. be honest. Um, what were you doing once you crossed the finish line? Nutritionally, are you still an athlete or are you no. just like, let's go? No. <laughs> I, Tell us and maybe about that. I would recover better, <laughs> but no. I mean, like obviously, like right after you're drinking Gatorade or whatever. But I'd already be ordering a burger if, or a, or nacho somewhere, right? Like I just, I just didn't want to think about anything but celebrating with my family or commiserating with my family. Um, I'm a big beer and nachos or burger person, and now that I'm not an elite athlete anymore, I am like most nights of the week, which is kind of great. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I just, I didn't really worry about nutrition. I tried to like turn that part off in my brain for a couple of weeks. Cause I mean, especially as an elite athlete, it's a 365 job and you're always kind of thinking about it. So I'd really try to be deliberate of like, I'm not going to be worrying about that right now. Now I still think you need to hydrate and all that stuff, right? Like you don't want to just put your body in this huge deficit, but I think, I think it's okay to let your guard down and just be free, be free to whatever happens. What about you? I'm a, I try my hardest to be an athlete for like the 30 minutes after, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, While like you're doing interviews and in drug yeah, testing and cause you have to hydrate for drug testing. <laughs> yeah. And, um, the, the funny part is that on the course, if you're really doing your tr nutrition, right, you've drank about like 40 ounces anyhow, like that big water bottle. You've had the whole <laughs> she thing. Already drank that. Yeah. <laughs> it's already in there. So, um, yeah, but you're doing that. I think getting, you know, for me after a race, it's hard to eat something really solid. So like a protein, one of the recovery drinks or something like that, or banana or whatever, um, like a piece of fruit, something that is nutritious that you can get into the system in that 30 to 40 minute window after the race. I really focus in on that. I'm an athlete, I'm a professional athlete. I'm trying so hard. And then afterwards I'm done, um, for like two weeks and, and yeah, usually, um, Josh will send beers up to the room or Ryan will have like, we brought, um, we drove. So we brought this cooler and I put my nutrition in there, but I'm like, okay, we're throwing all that out. And like, you can't bring beer into hotels. So now we have a cooler to bring the beer into the hotel. So nice. we are planning for these I things. Like it. <laughs> You're thinking ahead. I think it's important to just, not that you have to eat bad. Nobody has to eat bad, but just don't worry about rules and calories and things like that for a little while. Cause I think it can, you know, you just had so much fun. You just worked so hard and just whatever suits your fancy in the moment, you should do that afterwards. Okay. So this leads to the question of best post-race celebration you can remember. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, I don't know if you read my book, but not a lot of them were that great. You had to have uh, some good ones. So uh, yeah, there were some. On. Um, well, you, you talk first because I know you drank out of a shoe, so that's pretty epic. I did do that. That was, that was like, um, that was a work heavy post race. Cause it was like, do this, do that. And then like, even when I was drinking out of the shoe out of the corner of my eye, the PR guy from the BAA was like, you have an interview at 5am in the morning. <laughs> 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 Gonna pour the rest of that out. Um, okay. My, I'll give you one. One of my, um, all timers was after the 2016, team because it was a long hard road to make that team it was after the fracture in 12 the whole thing so making it was a huge relief and we did the stuff for brooks after it was uh, a proper party that was a lot of people asking for photos and it feels like an obligation and then we rented at a place uh, this whiskey bar little tiny section and then my my close friends and family came up and just went bananas like one of my friends uh took an uber home and he told me later, he was like, I got in the Uber and the guy was like, yo, this is literally across the street. <laughs> he was like, just drive me there. <laughs> um, and then we went, we went to IHOP and I think I have a photo of Ryan laying on that bench in an IHOP. Um, just, it was because you're tired, you had too much fun yeah. and the whole thing. So that was a, that was a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Like the most that I partied was probably 2014 New York. You were there. It was that windy year. Oh, yeah. And I ran so bad. Those are the ones you just got to let yeah. go. And I had like, a, <laughs> I had a good crew of Colorado people that came out for it. And um, Emma Coburn was like, we're celebrating. 
And then it was like 3 a.m. And I was, and she goes, we're going to meet to run, right? And I was like, how are you awake? Like, I'm going, but we did. We went and ran the next day. But that was probably the most I ever, like, went out. And I remember my mom took Colt back to her room. And then she had to leave. She's like, you can't see this. No, you know, totally. She was like, your mom's crazy. Let's get him out of here. Like, whisk him away. Um, but I had to go into her room to get him because she had an early night flight. And she, and she goes, you're just coming in now. <laughs> I was like, judgment. yeah. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah, that was a pretty epic night. But uh, hard earned, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, whether I mean, it goes great or poorly, you deserve to just like. Yeah. Un- I mean, like you, I put like so much time into that marathon and effort. And even on that day, it was, it didn't go well. And I hit the wall. So, I, it's the first time I'd ever hit the wall. It was so awful. I remember Dina Castor afterwards goes, Well, wow, it's the first time you hit the wall. Like, welcome to being a marathoner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we all put so much into it, whether it goes good or bad. And it doesn't diminish all the work you put into it, whether you get your goal or not. You still put all that work in. It's not shinier if you do well. Obviously, it feels better, but you still went out there and trained your butt off every day with this goal in mind. So, yeah. What What's the mindset? And this is a tough question, but and I don't want to prepare anyone for this, but like, what what's the mindset when you do have that moment where you hit the wall and you have to like recalibrate and adjust and like, why stay on the course and what gets you to the finish line? You know, that really only happened to me once. Um, and it was just, I, I was so out of it, honestly. I, it just felt like, literally, like, there were, like I've heard people say, oh, you hit this wall. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, you get tired around 20. But no, it was like so much weight. I just felt like I was carrying 50 people on my back. But I just kept going because my legs kept moving. And I do remember thinking... When I see Mark Wetmore, that was my coach at the time, I'm going to ask him if I can drop out. And then after the race, I was like crying and I go, you weren't there. You told me you were going to be there around 24 miles, 23 miles. And he goes, you looked right at me and I told you, you're fine. Get across the finish line. (laughs) So I really like I missed the fluid station. I didn't even see it and I needed it, you know, like so to describe it for me was like it was honestly like an out of body experience. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, it, but you can, st- I still finished. So don't worry yeah. about it. It's fine. <laughs> the glycogen depletion, like when you're on empty, it's like you haven't had food in like four days. Oh, it was so, like, uh, it was rough. Yeah. Um, that's, but I mean, I became an official marathoner that day. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, not, I would have liked to have <laughs> gone differently, but no, I, I survived I, it. I think that those are moments that are kind of an opportunity. And like I, I had that in New York last year as well. There's something about New York. And like it's yeah. just like, it's all uphill that last mm-hmm. part of it and you can see the top of it and you're just like, I, that's like miles away it, and it's it, all, and I feel, I can't lift my legs. That's a tough one. Cause when it's going well, you're just taking this energy, but when it's going bad, yeah. You're like, why did I sign up for this? It's Stop so hard. Stop looking at me. <laughs> The fans. There's so many people out here. Yeah, there's so many people cheering. You're like, please stop. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great marathon, though. We love it. <laughs> so I was gonna. What I was gonna say is that I think it's those moments are an opportunity to when you're like, it's the floor, right? Like, mm. this is as bad as it's gonna get. Like, how high can I raise the floor? Yeah. And that's a weird thing to like turn your energy towards. But like, what can I do on my worst day? how good can that be? You know, and that's if, if I have moments where I feel like it's all going awry, that's something that always kinds of stick in, will stick in my head. And I hope that no one has that moment on Sunday. Hope we all race amazingly. But if you're in that struggle bus, um, how can you be on the, how good can you be on the bad day? Cause then that raises everything above to the floor, go, the, the floor goes up, the ceiling goes up. So something to think about if you find yourself on the struggle bus. Yeah. All right. Well, I feel like we've uh, tapped into we've a lot of We've done our typical advice. wander around topics that we do, but uh, maybe we should take some questions. I think we should take some questions. If people have any, there's a mic right here, and um, Please we'll answer, f- answer for a while. No questions? Okay. Don't be shy. <laughs> We're going to start talking about a bearded dragon again, so you better come up here and ask us something. All right. Well, this is fun. This is just small crowd. Okay, also, we don't have to. We certainly don't have receipt. to answer questions. Can I ask for beer? Yeah. So, yeah. Any 
I'm just excited for you. It's going to be such an awesome experience. Look, you know all the things. We are all going to tell you the same thing. Start conservative, hydrate well, blah, blah, blah. But like, you know that, right? But just for me, when I crossed my first finish line of a marathon, it was in New York. I could not, I was so emotional and it just changed the way that I looked at myself. I was like, if I can do this, I can do anything. And so I'm excited for you because you're going to have challenges along the way. You're going to have patches that are great. You're going to have patches where you're like, why did I do this? But when you cross that finish line, you will never look at yourself the same. And it's going to be awesome. I mean, maybe does have some actual advice. No, I think that's great. Anybody else? Anybody? All right, we got a bunch of pros in here. Go ahead. Just repeat. Um, have you ever gotten into a race feeling like you're about to kind of break through the goal that you have been wanting to taste? How do you manage nerves that come? It's kind of like, oh, the weather's going to be great. Oh, I'm out of excuses. Holy crap, no. <laughs> Uh, I mean, for me, I think that's the the fun space to be in. That's the best stuff, right? Like, it's the hardest because the only thing you can do is goof it up. Um, but you're not going to goof it up. You're prepared. You're ready. You be smart. And if for some reason you don't get that breakthrough, the cool part is the training doesn't go away. It's still there, and you'll have another opportunity. Uh, it's just cool when you get it right on the day. So be excited about it. I think sometimes in breakthroughs, you have to take some risks. So be smart early and take calculated risks when you need to. Um, sometimes they help you break through. Sometimes you break down. But if you want to get to the other side, you, you have to take some chances. And um, it's cool that you have the segment to back it up and the, you know, the um, confidence to even be thinking like that. And I wish you the best. But if it doesn't work out, it's all still there and you just move forward and find the next one. I do want to echo though, the fact that you feel like you're about to have a breakthrough is pretty special. And so probably the work is there and you just need to believe it in the moment because you don't get that feeling very often. And when you do, it's because you've nailed everything and you're ready for that. I'm all over the map. I don't have like a single one, but I think um, Zach Bryan's been heavy on my playlist. Um, I'm trying to think of the song. Heading South. All right, let's go. I love the 80s, and that's what's on my playlist before a race. Just like oh, the entire 80s? Come on, there it is. <laughs> I get a okay, specific well, I do, song. I do like... <laughs> It's, I'm cheesy like that, right? Okay. Like, I like to hear don't stop believing in yeah. that kind of thing. Like, I like that cheese where it's like you almost want to roll your eyes, but also inside you're super excited. That's what I like. I like the cheesy things that make me feel good, that make me think about happy times. I don't know. 80s are my jam. Boston. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Weird, I wonder why. <laughs> um, that's so funny. It's like, wah, wah. The grandma's half marathon, um, which actually probably is. <laughs> yeah, it's an awesome race, and that's where I grew up. So I think when I ran there, I ran there in 2012 on the way to London Olympics. And so I think when I think of like my favorite race, it's that just because of the meaning, and I got to see so many people from my past and people who helped me, who were a huge part of my life of running before I went off and moved away from Minnesota. So it's not as cool as being Boston Marathon champ and loving Boston. That was but. like iconic celebration photo though, right? Like fist pump. Yeah. Like there was so much emotion in that awesome. photo. It was a very happy it's, day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's like the key card when you go to the hotel. I'm like, <laughs> <"Shh>, it's <Karen." laughs> Yeah. She's like, yes. Slide the door open. Exactly. <laughs> How 
Well, I feel like that's a podcast in itself. <laughs> it's a very good question, and it's very complicated because I don't think that every brand is bad or every brand is good. And really, I think this is a great discussion that we could have later. But for me, it's really personal. Do I see myself reflected? The values that I hold, are they reflected here? And I've had to make some hard choices and be like, this doesn't reflect me anymore. Um, and it's, it's tough and it's tough when it's a brand you revered or whatever, or you had a special connection with, um, but that doesn't mean they can't redeem themselves later on. But for me, it's just sort of like a, I'm not reflected. The things that I care about and the things that I value are not reflected in that right now. And so I'm going to spend my money elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, I think that's great advice. I think it's it's very personal, and obviously all of our values aren't the same. So um, what I would want from a brand is going to be very different from other folks as well. And my relationship with the brand um, is very different for the, from other folks in the same way. You know, I, if I don't see things I like or disagree with certain things, like if, if it were Brooks, for example, I could have conversations with people in the room. And I think that's what's really great about our positions as athletes is um, we take our values and have the conversations to try to make those changes. So it's very different for everyone. And, you know, I think we all have that decision to make. And I've, I feel like I've been very fortunate to, to be with partners for a really long time. Um, and I think we learned to be really, really picky about who we even sign a deal with uh, to begin with. And I think as a young pro, that's not something you even consider. You're like, I just need a deal. Like, I yeah. want to make it mm -hmm. as a runner. Uh, and then the longer you are in the sports, like, oh, I can use my platform, use my voice, ask for change um, and have input. And so I think we are both able to really do that now, um, which is a nice space to be in. I think it's kind of a privilege too. Like there were brands that I signed with or sponsorships I had when I was younger because I needed the money, you know? I wanna keep running, I need the money for whatever situation it was. But I also think you, people, we evolve and brands evolve and sometimes we're together and sometimes we're not. That doesn't mean we can't come back together again. I think this is a really hot button topic this week, but I also think it's a good discussion just in general because every brand is complicated. And so it's very personal. I don't think that answers your question at all, but I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting to watch this across the sport, and I understand the BQs have shifted. We just watched the world record go to 211.53. So to be an elite runner, things have shifted. I mean, it, things just evolve, and that's where we're at. And it's a product of people getting better. It's a product of better training. It's a product of technology. Um, so I'm not totally shocked by that shift. Um, what's really cool about those races is they have a charity component and they let folks in through different means. Um, you know, to be an elite runner, we don't have a charity component. We lose our job if you can't adapt to the new 211.53. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's a great race. I understand that change is always difficult. I think one of the things that's so fascinating about it is it's like rooted in tradition, but it's also trying to adapt to the modern and how do you balance those things and that's always going to be tricky for a race that has so much history and is old um so it's it's a especially unique place to be having that discussion uh just because it's it's 127 128 years of history there um so yeah i mean 
it's not totally surprising. I think that's nice that there are other means of getting in. And, um, you know, I think it's, we'll have to do for now. And, you know, there's discussions around it, but I think these times have changed so quickly and it happened in such a short span of time that everyone's, um, reeling. There's no real plan. It's like we're reactionary and, people need to sit down and really plan out the future and what that looks like and, and keep those things in mind and um, not make it elitist, but there's also something about achievement as well. And it's got to be meaningful to achieve too. So there's a lot to balance there. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I think it, I don't think it's bad to have a race you have to qualify for. I think that the times have gotten crazy, but I also think that's happening across the sport. The one thing I really don't like and specifically with Boston is the down playing the the down looking at the charity component that really really bothers me and I didn't ever really see that until I was just telling Chris this during COVID when we there was a virtual option and people were mad that people were posting that they ran the Boston Marathon saying they didn't qualify so I do think there is a little bit of attitude that could be shifted and I think that basically I just want to say like if you don't support charity runners you're kind of a a-hole. Fair, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of all I wanted to add to that. that there's, there's, <laughs> we need to make room, and I think it's important, and you never know who, by, by raising all of this money to help a charity, you're doing something that's way beyond yourself. You don't ever know who's going to be inspired by that and who mm-hmm. someone else might take up running because of that and who might, um, down the line, be really inspirational. So I think... I do think Boston Marathon's in a tricky place. I think last year and this year, there's a lot of discussion, I, and I think it's valid. And um, I think they might have to change some things. But I also genuinely love the Boston Marathon, and I love that I got to be a part of history. I think you guys should submit, like, podcast episode ideas for the rest of yes. this. <laughs> Instead of asking questions, we're just going to get a piece of yes. paper, and then the next couple episodes will be, you know. Collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. I will ask a totally ridiculous, serious question. Just ran a marathon and watched two people in front of me going through the Guinness Book of World Records. Greg, one of those like official trying to do against the world records, handcuffed to each other. <laughs> so I will ask you, if you had to run a marathon handcuffed to somebody, <laughs> who would it be? <laughs> It is funny because my husband and I would kill each other. <laughs> my family would drive me nuts. My friends would probably drive me nuts. I actually do think we could have a successful handcuffing. <laughs> I was going to say, there's like, there's nobody that I wouldn't kill. Um, we might be able to make it because I feel yeah. like we'd be like, okay, we need five miles where we both should. Up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'd be able to say whatever we needed to say to each other to get through those moments. It yeah. reminds me... Of this race, Trans Rockies, my husband did it with a friend of his one year as a team. And he was like, we should do that. And I was like, we're, we've been married a long time. We're very happy. I don't think we should do this because it's just different in those moments. It's yeah. different. And as you guys all know, as runners, it's different in those dark moments. But I think that doesn't, I could survive it. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with that. If nothing else, she's tiny. I'll just jerk her. Yeah. <laughs> like drag me in. Yeah. I'm dying. <laughs> yeah. A banana. Uh, <laughs> a banana? <laughs> yeah, I've tried one of them on before. They're really pretty easy going. I know, a cold he has one and he's running movement. in that practice. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe a bearded dragon because I'm into them right now. <laughs> see that. I love the signs. I see them for like the first 
three. It's like Colt cheering me on a big <laughs> grunt. It's like <laughs> over the last 10K now, I'm like, <laughs> um, but there was real, uh, one, a really good one at the 2016 Olympic trials. It was really hot, the whole thing. And someone had a sign that said, hurry up. I want to go to the beach. And I was like, that's good. The first time I ran a marathon, I noticed the signs so much and it was actually distracting because I just never run like that, right? I would always just run on a track and people are yelling, whatever, but it's this tiny space and it was kind of distracting. So after my second marathon, maybe I started wearing sunglasses so I wouldn't feel bad that I wasn't acknowledging your poster. (laughs) So um, yeah, as I got deeper into my career, I really didn't notice the posters if I'm being honest. You were much more focused than I was. I was more focused. (laughs) Yeah, but not really, because you had actually a detailed race plan, and I was like, just win. (laughs) (laughs) All right. How are we feeling? Chicago. I mean... This is great. Um, honestly, a couple things. Uh, I'm trying to run the American Masters record. This is the place to do it. Uh, flat, fast course. You hope for the good weather. I think we're going to get all those things. So, you know, it's just don't goof it up um, at this point. And two, um, I think I watched this race. It's been 13 years since I've run here. I watched this race the year, well, I guess it was two years before I debuted. I volunteered at the finish line. Um, I volunteered in the elite suite. I gave like the agents water and like the athletes, like their snacks. Uh, and then I worked at the finish line and, um, watched people cross and gave like towels and the bags to the elites and then stayed there and watched the masses come through throughout the day. And it's kind of what got me into the marathon. I, but prior to that, I was like, that looks insane. Those people are running for too long. I don't want to do that ever. And then watching people start as runners, they stand on the start line, they're runners, and then they cross the finish line, they become marathoners. Um, I just thought that was super cool. And I was like, I can't wait to do this. So I'm excited to jump back in here and remember that feeling and kind of a full circle moment where I'm not chasing the front of the pack this time around. That's not the goal. I'm just out there doing my own thing, trying to get the best out of myself. And um, that's what I witnessed when I first volunteered here a long time ago. So it's brought me back. I never raced here. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good question, though. Like, she's has a goal, right? The goal is this master's record, which she's going to get. But it makes sense to do it here. This is a good course, a good opportunity. I think for me, I never felt like I was the fastest, so I tended to choose the races that were a little bit harder. And I use air quotes because if you're running fast for 26 miles, it's hard. I don't care where you're doing it. But like I chose New York and Boston because I felt like that suited my athleticism better. And then I think even with Des, when you're an elite like she is, and the Olympic trials are coming up in February, maybe it's nicer to get the marathon and get three more weeks of rest before you have to train. You know, that time between Chicago and New York is pretty significant when you're talking about just weeks away until the Olympic trials. So I think those are all things that elites are factoring at this point. And I think on the men's side, they need to run that trial. They need to run the Olympic standards. So that's not going to happen in New York. They need to come and do it here. And that's not a slam on the men. No. Um, I just feel like we've been talking about that. We have been talking about it so much. Please get it done this weekend, boys. Let's go, guys. Um, So we could stop talking about it. But yeah, I think this is just a good race to come do that. And like we keep talking about, the weather is great. This is a perfect opportunity to go out and check that box, get those times. And it's Chicago. Yeah. There's pizza here. (laughs) <laughs> will Kara or me <laughs> if I set the master's record Kara's gonna get a Chicago <laughs> team tattoo I, I won't tattoo anything anymore I'll do it for Des there we go I, I'll hold it, it I have no her. tattoos and so I don't think it would be I don't think it would start with that but I don't I just but maybe when you once you get that first one done the then maybe you'll just let it go <laughs> maybe I'll commission a piece of art <laughs> I'll tattoo it on my forehead Des did it <laughs> You heard it here first. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not on my face. Awesome. Okay. I think um, I think we had some closing words from the folks at Fleet Feet Ultra um, team. Come on in. Yeah. Thanks, everybody.